Hi, and welcome back to The Scripture Life. Today is Wednesday, Wisdom and Wonder. My name is Theodosia, and I am glad to be back. We are going through the book of Proverbs, which is the book of wisdom. And today we're going to be doing um, two chapters. I've combined it, chapter 12 and chapter 13, because as I was reading it, um, they seem kind of similar together and it made sense to just so that we can get going with, with Proverbs is to combine the two because, um, again, like I said, as I was studying the, the information that was given is kind of, is kind of similar. Um, please grab your Bible and your notebook and also please take time, you know, on your own time and read the two chapters for yourself and see what you got and just go off of what um i am saying i hope that you guys have been enjoying the scripture life and that you have been um subscribed to our scripture life channel if you if you're new hit the the bell so that you miss none of our notification and as you have seen the teens have started um the new scripture life spoken um um which is they're going through the book of jonah which is good book this these these generations teens will reach you know their peers as well as um being used by the lord to minister to all who will listen so join us and listen to you know the videos and be encouraged and leave your comments. Oh, please be encouraged that, you know, you message us, leave your comments. Um, and so, but before we start and get into me reading, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for yet another opportunity to read your word, another opportunity to study. I pray for all those who are joining me today on this scripture life as we go through um, the book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and 13. Holy Spirit, I ask that you hide me and that you, you be my voice in the name of Jesus. I pray for all those who are listening that, um, that Lord, that you would give them ears to hear what you have to say to them, eyes to see, and hearts to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against any distraction right now. I come against anything that will keep them from hearing what it is that you have to say to them today and to receive it. And even for me to bring it up, it will come clearly with understanding and with wisdom and with awe because your word is mighty in power and it is the gospel that we are to be preaching and bringing forth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So again, grab your Bible, a pen, and a notebook, and let, let's let get. I'm going to read 12 first. Okay, 12. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but that counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are, are lie in wait for blood but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The words, I mean, sorry, the wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be con commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slightly but has slightly but has a servant than he who honors himself but lacks bread 
A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercy of the wicked are cruel. He who tolls, tells his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who follows for vority is the vault of understanding. The wicked convert the catch of evil men, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. The wicked is ensnared by transgressions of his lips, but the righteous would come through trouble. A man who satisfies with satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompose of of his man of a man's hand will be redundant to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath Wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but it falls witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercing of his sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truth lip, lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue <clears throat> is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but the counselor of peace have joy. No grave grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal tr truth truthfully are his delight. 23. A prudent man counsels knowledge. But the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous should should choose his friends right carefully, for the, the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but the diligent, diligent is man's precious possession. In the way of the righteous is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Chapter 13, a wise son heeds his father's instruction, but his comfort does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unrighteous feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the souls of the diligent shall be made rich. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is lawsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guides him, God's guides whose I'm saying, guides him whose way is blameless, but the wickedness overthrows the sinner. There are one who makes himself rich yet has nothing, and one who makes himself poor yet he get yet he get riches. The ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor does not have re hear rebuke. The light of the right of the righteous rejoice, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By pride comes nothing but staff, but with the wealth of ice is wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by the labor will increase. Hope defers or delays makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears Commandments will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. hard. Every pardoned man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays opens his follow. A wicked messenger follows into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. Poverty and shame will come to him who distrains correction. 
or doesn't want to disdain. But he who regards a rebuke will be honor. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Evil precious sinners, but the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. 23. Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor, and the lack of justice there is waste. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves his love him disciplines him promptly. The righteous eats to the satisfy of his soul, but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want. Amen. It seems like it was long, but I'm not going to take long to sum all of this up and um so in both chapters what i got what i you know got and understand is one like which starts in the beginning of chapter chapter um 12 which don't be stupid right and which verse one says whoever loves instruction loves knowledge but he who hates correction is stupid and that's throughout both you know of the chapters from verse 1 to, say, verse 14 of chapter 12, you know, like, if you follow instruction, it will it will lead you with favor with the Lord, as it says in verse 2. And, it, you know, and you will be living righteous. Excellent, you will have an excellent wife, of course. Like, seriously, you would choose your wife wisely because it says in 4, and an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. But if you're stupid and not follow instruction, you will end up marrying somebody that is that is not your crown. You know, that, that will not lead you in the direction. And then also, not only when it comes to marriage, just the whole, your whole out life in living. Like if you cannot literally follow instruction, even in chapter 13, Verse one, it says a wise son heeds his father instruction, but a scoffer, a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. If you cannot take correction, if you are not teachable, even in your household, how can you take correction from the Lord? Because the Lord corrects those who he loves. He rebukes those who he loves. And that's the same way. Like if you cannot be corrected, if you cannot be you know, have a spirit of teachability, like if that's a word, but anyways, if you cannot be able to learn, if you have made a mistake or, and somebody comes to you and, be, and, you know, say, Hey sis or brother, you know, maybe you should have said it this way, or maybe when you said this, you know, and you take that to the heart, then, you know, you don't have a teachable spirit. And, and I didn't say it, the Bible said it. It says, whoever lo who loves instruction loves knowledge. Because comes with instruction and rebuking is knowledge and understanding. But he who hates correction is stupid. I didn't say it. The word says it. And so um, I have some scripture, right? Um, verse... 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you young men of lesser rank and experience, be subjected to your elders. Seek their counsel. And all of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Tie on the servant's apron. For God is opposed to the proud, the disdrainful, um, and the defeat of I'm see, and he defeats them, but he gives grace to the humble. So, I mean, being, um, taking instruction and being teachable is, is a spirit of, is humbleness. Jesus was very, was very humble. And, um, you, we have to have a spirit of teach, being humble. And also 
Proverbs 13, 18 says, Poverty and shame will come to him who refuses instruction and discipline. But he who accepts and learns um, from reproof or counsel is under honor, honor, honor. Just like over here um, in chapter 13, verse... Where was it? 13, oh, verse 24. He who, he who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him discipline him promptly. Like, you don't wait to correct. You don't wait to discipline. And even if you, you have to take a rod to that child, you know, like you have to chastise that child. You have to correct. You have to train the child for the future. You know, it starts at a young age. And even sometimes that consists of, yeah, they may have to get a whooping. Right. And because if you don't take correction, then you end up falling into an example. Verse um, six in Chapter 12, I'm really going back and forth. Chapter 12, verse 6. The wicked, I'm sorry, 6. The words of the wicked are lie, lie in the weight of blood. Like you lay there, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. You know, you're like, you can, you, you're you prone to having like things happen to you. Verse 7. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. The righteous takes instruction. You're willing to be teachable. Um, even in 13, verse um, 4, yeah. It talks about the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made right. If you're if you're able to take instruction and you're able to be corrected and you you're not walking in stupidity, you will walk in diligent and that diligently from the instruction that you receive from people will lead you to be made rich, not just rich like financially, but like in everything that of your life and how you carry yourself. Another scripture is um. Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is given all scripture is God breath given by divine instruction and is profitable for instruction, for for correction, um for I mean conviction, for correction, um for training in righteousness and I'm going to read in my little footnotes in between. This is the Amplified. So I'm going to read it again. I'm sorry. All, all scripture is God breath given by divine instruction and is profitable for instruction, for correction of sin, for correct, I mean, conviction of sin, correction of error and restoration of, of error and restoration of obedience for training in righteousness, learning to live in a comfort, a comf, confident to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. So, if you don't like take instruction from godly men, godly women, you don't take instruction from your household, from God's word. The Bible says you're stupid, and stupidity will leave you into like even more destruction in life like you'll be falling into sin you'll be falling into a whole like Proverbs is so good like literally speaks like truth you'll be falling into evil evil will be pursuing you like it says in chapter 13 verse 21 it says evil pursues sinners but to the righteous good shall be repaid so like you do stupid things stupid things come after follow you 
One more scripture I'm going to give on this topic is, well, I love this, Hosea 4, 6. And it, it's shared a lot also in um in my in my church it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and then some version says my people perish but my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of my law where i reveal my will because you the priestly nation have rejected knowledge i will also reject you from being my priest since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. So as believers, professing believers, we cannot like put to the side instruction. We cannot put to the side God's word, especially if instruction in God's word. Godly counselor is good, you know, and you have to be teachable in every area but your greatest um, example and instruction you follow is God's word. And you have to, you know, take heed to it. And because if you don't, it doesn't just affect when you walk in stupidity and not following and not being teachable. It doesn't just affect you, but it also affects those who are tied into your destiny, your children your husband, your wife, your who you are connected with, you're on your job. If you make a stupid mistake because you choose not to follow the instruction, it can lead to many, you know, dest destruction for other people, not just you. All right. And so then the next thing, of course, it kind of ties in with the first is to listen. Like we have to be able to, to listen, right? And listening taking instruction as well is you know say in chapter 12 verse 15 it says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he who heeds counselor is wise so like your ways <laughs> may seem right to you but may not be right in the situation or to others taking instruction starts at home if you can listen to like your godly parents or just even if they're not there yet, but if you cannot respect and obey them, how can you listen, you know, to your heavenly father? And then if you are not listening to your heavenly father, how can you listen to your boss or listen to anybody else that's in leadership over you, your pastor? James 1, 19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Malachi 2.2 2 says, If you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send the curses upon you and I will curse your blessings in indeed. I have already cursed them because you do not lay it to heart. So again, just like in Hosea 4, 6, if you don't take instruction, if, same thing in Malachi 2, 2, if you don't listen to the things of the Lord and don't listen to instructions, it doesn't only just affect you, but it also affects your family, your lineage, you know, your blessings and then curses are put upon because your lack of listening, your lack of um, paying attention. Um, and then over here, like even verse 17, I mean, verse seven in chapter 13, it says, there is one who makes himself rich yet has nothing and one who makes himself poor yet he has great riches so being just because you're rich does not mean like you you're so smart and you you know like rich can you can be stupid and have a lot of money just just saying but um another verse proverbs 1 3 says 
But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. So when we listen to the Lord, we won't um we won't have to worry about the, the things that are happening. You know, when we abide by his instruction and take heed, as Solomon is like explaining in the whole book of Proverbs, but in these two chapters of taking heed and, you know, and listen to and instructions. And the next thing that um, I want to share is to like truthfulness, tell the truth, being honest. Um, verse 17 of chapter 12 says, he who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness, um, but a false witness deceit and then 80 says there is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword but the tongue of the wise promotes health 19 the truth truthful lip shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil but counselor of peace have joy and then when we flip over to to 13 13 says the pride verse 10 and 13 the pride comes the by pride comes nothing but staff but with the well of vice is wisdom um thir verse 13 says he who des despises the word will be destroyed but he who fears the commandments will be rewarded and then it says over here about I think I skipped it. Oh yeah, that was it. So um if you don't speak the, oh, the mouth. Here it is. Verse two. That's what it was. I skipped over it. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He, and three, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. So when we speak truth, blessings come. We don't have to worry about um, coming up with what to say next we don't have to worry about what other people say when we speak the truth you know it's like we know it's the truth and and especially if you speak god's word right you speak truth you speak god's word now if you tell lies it's deceitful then you have to think about another lie to cover up the lie that you just told i mean like it's all a whole hot mess so like there's no way um thank you lord and 12 chapter 12 in proverbs verse 12 the wicked convert the catch of evil men but the root of righteous yields fruit so like you convert like when the wicked speaking evil lies is is of the wicked and like you're gonna have evil but if you speak truth righteous you have a, a fruit fruitfulness you have good fruit right so proverbs 14 5 says a faithful witness will not lie but a false witness will utter lies and then proverbs fourteen twenty five says a truthful witness saves lives but he who speaks lies is treacherous treacherous i think i said that right you know, so like people stay away from those who lie. Um, Proverbs nineteen twenty eight says, an evil witness makes fun of fairness and wicked people love what is evil. We're supposed to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And God hates lies and he it is like he hates it, deceit. And then here's another one, Proverbs 21, 28. A false witness will perish, 
But a man who listens to truth will speak forever and go unchallenged. You know, and then also we have to be speaking of truth, but we also have to be careful with our mouth and what comes out of our mouth. Not only like we are to like speak truth, but we also, we should think, yes, something may be, you want to just, I'm going to tell the truth. You know, I'm just going to tell it like it is. Tell the truth, but tell the truth with like, with wisdom, use wisdom when you're speaking you know, it may be the truth that you want to speak, but is the timing right? And the only way to know that is by being led by the Spirit. And First Peter 3.10 says, Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit, right? And then Proverbs 21.23 says, Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Now, you don't have to always be talking. And we talked about this in the in earlier Proverbs where it says, I mean, those who are quiet, they're deemed wise. Even if they don't even know like a lot, don't even know the things of the Lord, the Bible says, even those who are being who are quiet, they are seem wise because they're not running their mouth with every opportunity that is given. And something that stuck with me growing up with my nana used to always says is just because you have a mouth does not mean that it has to keep going. So <laughs> in saying I took wisdom from that, like you don't always have to talk all the time. And I learned a hard way to, you know, I like, okay, so also another scripture, let me share, Psalms 141, verse 13. Um, Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. That should be like a prayer for all of us. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. And also James one twenty six. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. And so people deem Christianity as a religion. I deem it as a life as a lifestyle, not a religion. But if you deem somebody to be religious and righteous and you name yourself to be that way james 1 26 says you claim this you are to control your tongue you know because if you don't you know you're fooling yourself and your and your religion that you speak in or you telling is foolish or actually is worthless but then also james 3 verse 8 that I love it says but no human being can tame the tongue it's a restless evil full of deadly poison wow there's you know and then Proverbs 18.21 I was just going to say it but I'm just going to the verse Proverbs 18.21 says there's death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit so like we got to speak truth we have to be careful what's coming out of our mouth we you know not we have to think before we open our mouth and we should speak god's word and um the last thing I want to share is in chapter 12 in verse 26, it says that the righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. And then if you flip over to chapter 13, it says, um,
verse 20, chapter 13, verse 20 says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the the companion of fools will be destroyed. So I've always, at a young age, I was taught this from um, chapter 12, 20. You choose your friends wisely. Be careful who you deem your friends. You label as friend, right? God call us his friend, right? And it's not all of us is not his friend. It's only those who accepted him uh, in our following. And friendship is um, everybody wants to belong. You know, that's just something that is placed within us, right? But not everybody you can belong to right so you have to be careful in who you choose your friend deceit is the heart of those who devise evil but joy is in the heart of those who give counsel of peace if you have friends that are every time you're around them there's some kind of issue some kind of problem are you sure they're your friends you know i'm not saying don't you can't communicate with people and have um and have um, acquaintance, but just be careful who you label as a friend, you know, because he who walks in 13, 20, he who walks with wise men become wise. So if you are walking with wise, you become wise. So that means if you're walking with fools, you're gonna be labeled as a fool, even though you may not be doing the foolish and stupid things that they're doing, but because of who you choose to, to hang out with, People may label you as that. So that is what I have to share with um, chapter 12 and 13 of Proverbs. I mean, go back and read it. I mean, there's so much more in there, but that's just what I have to share. And I pray that you got understanding and wisdom and some are from it. God's word is awesome. His The gospel is of truth is great and there's everything in this bible in how to live is i mean it's all in here we just have to take the time and read it and apply it to our lives but until we meet again you have a blessed day and father i thank you for this day and i thank you for the opportunity to share it i pray god that we will learn to take instruction that we will, we will learn to be teachable and that we will learn to close our mouth and listen. Not only listen to your voice, but listen to instructions of others that may be teaching us and that we will not um, be so quick to open our mouth and go against what is being taught. If we don't understand it, if we don't agree with it, Father, let us take it to you um holy spirit you are the only one that's able to tame our tongue and we surrender those things to you today and i pray for all those who were listening lord i pray that it minister to them on this day i pray for all those who may not know who you are i pray that today salvation enters that comes to them and that they will surrender their life to you and they will ask jesus come into my heart and that they will repent and know that they, you know, that they were a sinner. But praise God, you desire that none should perish. And that's why you send your son. So I pray, Heavenly Father, on this day that salvation enter into a home of somebody, even through this airway, in the mighty name of Jesus, and that they surrender their life to you. And they ask that Jesus, you will come into their heart. And that you will make them new in the mighty name of Jesus. And so thank you that just like that, with confession of our mouth and asking you to come into our heart, just like that, you take every evil, everything that we have done wrong. And the Bible says that you take it as far as the east is from the west. And it also says that you take it as deep as the sea. Father, I pray that those who are listening is not by mistake that you came across this scripture life channel. 
I pray, Heavenly Father, that today lives have been changed in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for the souls that have came into the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you the glory and we give you the honor. And we thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And if you have accepted the Lord Jesus, you know, as your Lord and Savior, let us know, you know, in any of our videos, um, we want to interact with you guys, write us, you know, the scripture life. And um, we also have a website, you know, look us up and have you know, a lot of um, tools that can be used, you know, how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible, you know, just different things. So again, I thank you and you have a blessed day.